talk to us about um, what it was about this week. I mean, a month, two months ago, we thought the IPO window was sealed shut. And this week, explosions out of the gate. What was it that gave these companies such confidence? Well, I think a lot of companies were targeting to come out right after Labor Day. And so this is the first crop. And don't think it's going to slow down yet. We've got busy weeks for the foreseeable future here leading up to the election. And oh, by the way, this is the first week we saw tech companies, but we had 45 IPOs at NASDAQ in August. We usually have four or five IPOs in August on NASDAQ. So you're seeing an explosion across healthcare, uh, special purpose acquisition companies or SPACs. And now the tech companies are getting into the game. So it's really just been a wild ride. So what are the next weeks looking like to you? Again, we've got a, a busy lineup. One of the big ones coming out next week is GoodRx. Uh, we've got a lot of other great companies. Um, I mentioned SPACs before. We continue to see new SPACs coming to market, new sponsors forming SPACs. And interestingly, we're starting to see a lot of great business combinations. So Velodyne announced that they're going to be doing a business combination with Graph Industrial Corp and listing on NASDAQ. Now, you compete fiercely with the New York Stock Exchange for listings. They got Snowflake. They've got Palantir in the next couple of weeks planning to list on the New York Stock Exchange as well. Talk to us about the state of that competition. How big a deal is it when you lose a company that big? You know, we compete fiercely for every listing. We're really proud of our track record this year. We've won over 85% of all operating company IPOs this year. And when it comes to competition for listings, it's not just at the IPO. We've had a number of great companies, including uh, Keurig, Dr. Pepper, and AstraZeneca announced their transfer of their listings from the New York Stock Exchange to NASDAQ. That's over $180 billion in market cap that's going to move their listing over from New York to NASDAQ. So we're extremely proud. That's all based on our value proposition of helping our companies through our investor relations assets, helping them with their branding and their messaging to both investors as well as consumers. And then also some really exciting index opportunities, especially the NASDAQ 100, which has just been on a tear this year. Okay, but you do put a lot of work into trying to win these companies over. Airbnb, for example, also expected to come out this fall. They haven't made a decision yet on NASDAQ versus the NICE. What are you doing? What conversations are you having with them to convince them to go your way? You know, one of the things we talk about is how can we make your IPO day special for you? And one of the things we did this week that was really unique, we had JFrog and Sumo Logic go public on NASDAQ. Of course, they couldn't travel to New York to celebrate with us there. So we hosted an opening bell ceremony out here in Silicon Valley on Wednesday and Thursday morning, ringing the bell at 6.30 in the morning. Thank goodness all the smoke cleared up and we were actually able to get some nice cool temperatures. But it was an amazing celebration with both companies on that day. Now, there is a lot of uh, confusion still going back and forth about the TikTok situation. But one thing that has been reported is, is that ByteDance the Chinese owner of TikTok, if a deal happens, would plan to take a U.S. TikTok company public next year. What's your take on that? Well, we welcome companies from around the globe uh, onto NASDAQ this year, including many Chinese companies. And so, you know, there's definitely been a lot of discussions around that that we've been having with the SEC, with our regulators to make sure we've got clean, well-lit uh, environments for those companies to come to market. And as long as uh, the companies are qualified to, to list on NASDAQ, we'd love to have them. So how long do you think the IPO window is open for business? Does it close after Election Day? You know, I just got off multiple calls today talking to companies that are planning to flip their S1 public in November and then target an IPO in December. So we have a lot of like the valuations that they're seeing in the markets right now. They like the multiples and they really want to try to get out before the end of the year. And honestly, we're already starting to talk to companies planning a Q1 IPO. So right now we don't see any sign of things slowing down.